Hello and welcome to the 875 Talk Show. Oh, what a game, what a game, what a game. Before I get into it, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. And uh, <laughs> ended 3-2 to the Blues. Oh, let me start. As again, as I always say, during the game, I always put do some notes during it and I will read through them to give you a brief overview of what the game was like. One change, it's our win against Preston. Graham out for Williams with a possible injury. West Brom coming in with a, on the back of three consecutive draws and Blues coming into this game on the back of a win at Preston and two losses. Early doors, Blues were great. Uh, Troy Deeney with an early shot, just widened over the bar. Trusty took a bit of a knock from Bielik after a collision. Great work from our midfield. Um, they played really well together. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still watching it as well. Um, uh, looks like Adley midfield was playing really well. Great passing between the lads. Good ball from Deeney to Collan. Uh, Williams with a good cross. Curled it inches away and the keeper had to push it away from going in his own net. Uh, Blues were looking very good in the early moments. <coughs> Sorry. Good play from the midfield. Colin battled all the way through in the corner to get the ball in a good position. Hogan laid the ball off for Chong, but the shot went very wide, over the, high over the bar. And then out the blue, Baku, uh, Chong gets the bounce. The, the ball lays very well for Chong, who passes it to Bakuna. Bakuna slides the ball to Hogan between the legs of a West Brom player, who slots it in the back of the net. 1-0 to the Blues, 14th minute. Albion fans were silent. Blues fans went batshit like we always do. Seconds later, Albion came across us Ball came in for the right-hand side um, for some really quick, great passing from Albion. Jed Wallace took a shot and Ruddy, great save from the far stick. Shortly after, unfortunately, Jed Wallace, 1-1, looked like a carbon copy of Hogan's goal. A couple of quick fire passes, slotted the ball, past Williams to beat Jed Wallace and under Ruddy for the equaliser. Blue seemed to lose a little bit at that point. We started to hit over hit passes, do what we normally do. You know, we can get the ball in our defence and we keep to forget our midfield and just boot it straight over to our our attacking lads. Uh, Malumbu had a shot in the middle of the park with way too much space. Ball went over the bar. Uh, looks like, to be honest, as I said, looked like Blues had the wind knocked out of them a little bit. Um, we really need to straighten up and get back in the game. We need to start playing how we played in the first 15 uh, two West Brom players landed on the deck. One just landed awkwardly from a header. Uh, the other one was uh, clipped by Sanderson. Uh, since the West Brom goal, we seem to have forgotten that we have a midfield. Balls are going from the defence straight to either Hogan or Deeney. We need to bring the midfield back into the game. Our goal came from a good move in the midfield. In fact, all of our chances came from a uh, great play from our midfield, lads. We need to bring them back in the game and on the ball more. The game seemed to level out. After that, Albion looked a little bit more happy to play for the black, and Bluey just happy. We were just happy to boot the ball long and hopefully could get someone on it. Um, Bakuna started to look more and more frustrated. A couple of cheap free kicks were given away by Bakuna in five minutes. Uh, Williams hit the deck, holding his head. Not really sure what happened there. They didn't show a replay, uh, but he looked like he was holding his deck. It looked like he came down, and had a collision with an Albion player. Uh, another good move by the Blues to get near the Albion box, but again, it was like we just kept passing it. It was cross from Carlisle, got deflected back to him, so we took another one, went to Williams, who passed it to Chong, who passed it back to Williams, then we lost the ball. Uh, much more middle, mid, midfield play at that point. Blues seemed to have gotten over that five, ten minutes where we looked a bit nervy. Um, Dini set the ball straight to Chong through the defence, looked to be on goal, tackle came in and brought Chong, Chong down. Initially, from what I first thought, I thought it was a pen, but the referee waved it away and tempers really started to flare. Townsend hugged, well, I say hugged Bakuna, that's not the word I want to use, but YouTube won't let me use the other one. Hugged Bakuna from behind, Townsend received a yellow. Trusty and Sanderson had been great in the back. Uh, another coming together between Trusty and Bielik. Bielik was on the deck this time, looked like a bit of a head injury. I don't know if that was just a little payback from the reverse of what happened earlier in the match. We seem to have done more damage at that point to us, to our own lads, and we have the Albion players. Four minutes of extra time. Shortly after that, Bielik on the deck again, looks to be holding his groin. Apart from those five minutes, five to ten minutes where Blues looked shaky, we played really well. Good midfield play, quite solid at the back. I can't say our goal was better than the Albions at that point, as they were both mirror images of each other. I think John Eustace would be happy with the first half. I think the only thing he'd be disappointed is we're not in the lead at the end of the first half. 
if I was to say who was our best player in the first half, I'd have to go to Austin Trusty, doing all the silent defending work that never gets any reward. Really, it, it, to be fair, you could have picked out any of the back three lads. Uh, Mark Roberts had done fantastic as well. Um, they were all doing a really good job, same as Deion Sanderson. Uh, Blues have a really nasty habit of when we concede, we seem to lose focus, lose heart, just boot the ball straight up to our attacking line. I, I will admit I was worried about this game when I came into it, having blue, but Blues really have took the game into the stride at this point. Lads come out of the second half, but Bielik looked to be on the bench with Jordan James strutting onto the pitch. Uh, this, as I said, this is going to be one of those moments where the thinness of our squad will cause moments of worry because luckily Bielik was playing in a position where we had it covered, but we have other lads in positions where we don't have cover for them yet. Another good pass from Bakuna to Hogan, but again, unfortunately, Hogan was offside. West Brom came out the traps, early doors, looking to change the scoreline early in the second half. Blues were really on the cosh. Um... But we need, I said we need to stay resilient and not lose concentration. Carlang cleared the ball on the right-hand side and Didi won the first header, chased, managed to win a throw-in close to the Albion box. That's something we never saw last season from Deeney. And I'm happy to see it. Uh, ball bouncing between Deeney, Hogan and Bakuna on the edge of the Albion box. Uh, ball landed to Carlang, who took a shot on his weaker foot and kind of went sky high. This is looking more and more like the bench will win the game and this is where Blues are going to struggle this season. Most teams in this league have a stronger bench than the Blues do. As soon as I'd finished typing that, 2-1 to the Blues. Move, move started out just outside the Blues box with Bakuna picking up the ball and running. Passed it to Dini. Dini, who up and over, back to Bakuna, who ran a little bit more. Great weighted pass for, uh, from the left to the inside to Hogan. Hogan slots it in to grab his brace off the bar. Great move, great goal. That's two goals for Hogan and two assists for Bakuna. Albion players started to show their frustration towards each other. Shortly after that, unfortunately, Roberts dropped to the deck after what looked to be pressing an Albion player. Looked to be hamstring. I could see him saying the word hamstring. He went off to the side. He did come back on, which I, I thought he wouldn't, because to be honest, if you hurt your hamstring, it's dangerous to carry on playing. 59th minute, Roberts for Lecco. Uh, shortly after that, uh, Sante came on for Yoxula. Yoxula. I don't know how to say that. Uh, looked like Colin had moved to the centre and Lecco played right wing back. Uh, West Brom instantly, because they know Lecco, they started putting pressure on the right side. Uh, in first moment, Lecco touched the ball. He gave away a free kick. Uh, shortly after that, he gave away a corner. Um, this is not to say anything negative against him. I think he did well in the game. Looks like Albion really put pressure on that side. Blues again on the counter, but Chong was brought down with a cynical foul by Gardner Hickman. Yellow card is shown. Chong looked really uncomfortable. He didn't really play. When I say he didn't play much after that, I think he he came back on, he played, but he wasn't the same lad he was at the start of the match. Might just be tired legs. I'm hoping it's nothing to be worried about. For some of the reason, Hickman tried to argue against his yellow card, even though any even a blind man could have said that was a yellow. There was a lot of tired legs on the pitch. We really need to keep our concentration. At this point, I thought 2-1, and I honestly thought they were going to get back in the game. Communication seemed to have dropped by the Blues several times. The balls come into the box, and due to miscommunication, Collins cleared it when um, John Ruddy was just about to get it, or Ruddy grabbed, tried. It, it, things like that happened, and it was just a mess. But then out of the blue, another counter-attack. Deeney with a fantastic ball to Hogan. Hogan was forced wide, but he brought the ball in, and from a very acute angle, back of the net, balls 3-1, hat-trick for Hogan. Blues fans went batshit like we always do. Brilliant work. Been stuck under the hammer for the last 15, 20 minutes. Then bang, quick move from Deeney straight to Hogan. Did a load of great work and grabbed under the goal. Shortly after that, we, we seemed to get a bit more life again. Deeney from a shot just outside the box. Great power. Unfortunately, the aim wasn't as perfect as he wanted it to be. In his defence, he didn't expect the ball to come back to him after that, after that pass. Boo started to ring around the hall falls from the Albion fans. 75th minute, Bakuna for Hannibal and Deeney for Juki. And Albion went for Livermore for Gard Gardner Hickman and Matt Phillips for Carl and Grant. Hogan, with great defensive work, won a free kick in our area. 80th minute and the Albion fans were leaving in their droves and they were expressing their displeasure for what they'd seen. 
And unfortunately, here comes the bit where I'm getting a bit pissed off. 81st minute, Asante was fouled outside the box by Sanderson, but dived into the box and wins a penalty. On the replay, it was a good four, four, it was It was outside the box. It should have been a free kick, not a penalty. Once again, another goal is given to our opposition from an official who had a very good view of what happened, but decided to go with a penalty. Unfortunately, it went at the back of the net. Well, trusty went, uh, not trusty, uh, John Ruddy went the wrong way. After that, the Albion were throwing the kitchen sink and the kitchen unit at us. They were throwing the whole kitchen at us at this point. Trusty saved our asses with an excellent clearance. 86th minute, Williams came off for George Hall. Uh, six minutes of extra time. I'd love to know how they calculated that. Um, Trusty with another great move to stop an Albion runner. He went past a couple of Blues players before Trusty finally stopped him. And Blues seemed to have sank really deep. You could see Eustace trying to pull them out and not give Albion the space. But Blues seemed to be one or two yards away from their marker when they needed to be closer. They needed to not give him an inch of space. And then the final whistle happened and the crowd went absolutely batshit. And, uh, yeah. Full teeth in the league. Fucking look at that. It would be easy for me to sit here and go Hogan, man of the match, but I'm sorry, but I have to give it to Austin Trusty. He'd been exactly where we needed to be every single time. He was fantastic at the back. Considering he hadn't played a single game in England before starting for the Blues, I think he's done well. That's not to discredit anything from Scott Hogan. He played really well. And honestly, it's easy for me to turn around and go, he scored three, he's man of the match. But I like the defensive work. We played well. We were well worth the goals. The sh- it shouldn't have been 3-2. It should have been 3-1. Albion, I'm sorry, but they were not what I thought they would be coming into this game. I think Blues played well. Our de- from our defence, from our goalkeeper to, to Hogan, literally every lad did, did the job proud. And this is what we wanted. This is what was missing from last season. This is what I said in my early videos, that we just need to give 100%. It's amazing to sit here and go, Blues won 3-2. And, you know, if this is Blues. We're, we're, we're used to scoring one if we're lucky, two if we're extraordinarily lucky, but three, that's practically a nerd off for us, unless it's against Luton. So, yeah, Blues won 3-2. We go up to 14th in the league. And uh, my heart rate will come down in the next hour or so. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to say it again. Doing really well. The channel's growing really well. I'm really happy with it. And I hope we'll see you in the next one. Okay, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, everyone.